Live from the Export Beer Garden Studio, this is the Agenda Podcast for the 20th of April. The Agenda, an alternative commentary collective podcast. G'day there, welcome along to the Agenda, full length, feature length, brought to you by Musashi and with G Lane and Manai Stewart. Mm-hmm. G'day Manai. Good morning, how are you Lane? Yeah, good mate, I'm good. Uh, as you can see, I'm resplendent. Yeah, you in, are. And my Warriors jersey. Yeah, you went and put that on before and our yeah. producer Adam said, this seems like an admission. It's an admission, I'm, I'm hoping it's a, it's a sign. I'm hoping it's an omen. An omen. An omen for Tuesday. Um, I'm hoping anyway, because as I said, I've, if, they, if they beat the storm. Yep. I'm on the I'm on the bus. I think a lot of people are on the bandwagon if they beat yeah. the storm this week. Yeah. It's a great time as well because if you've taken that Monday off like most people have, yes. then you are sort of landing the plane, you know, on that on that Mon- Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Roll straight into the Warriors. Bandwagon. Like mm-hmm. is it a bit old school? What is a bandwagon? Is that like the thing a, a, a horse and cart situation? Is that what they What's the bandwagon? I have no idea. Can we just say get on the bus or get on the get on the train? I'm I'm pitching more a train, a platform, getting on. The yeah, because that's what I imagine. Yeah. I imagine I I'm imagining more of a caboose. Whenever right. somebody mentions the bandwagon, you know the train's just departed from the station yeah. and everybody's running and you, um, to yeah. jump onto the back. That's a caboose to me. Yeah. So you can't. But jumping on the caboose. You can't jump on the caboose nah, in 2023. Can't. No, you can't. Certainly not. No, I think can't. Donald Trump's the only person who's gotten away with jumping on the caboose. Yeah, recently. yeah. Grabbing by the caboose. Yeah. 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 Anyway, let's get into it. So, Com Games chat. Yeah. Jeez, a lot of Com Games chat. Uh, New Zealand toying with the possibility of hosting the Com Games in 2030. Mm, 2034. 2034. Yeah. So, we were watching this story on the news last night, and my missus goes, 2030. I'll be dead by then. That's yeah. That's a long time into the future. Yeah, that is. That. I mean, I'll, I'll have no kids at home. That's, that's for me, that, is, that seems so long ago. Do you so, think you'll so have, long far away. Do you think any of them will be. Participating? No, no, <laughs> zero of them. Hey, but look, I mean, I, I quite like that. They've changed the way the Com Games. The Com Games used to be like the Olympics. It's like a city, and the yes, city has yeah. to take the brunt of uh, all the punishing sports that no one really wants to watch, but they have to provide facilities for. Yeah. But um, you know, the, the, with these new rules, you can host them all over the country. So, do we? I mean, will we need to build anything new? So this is, I've had a theory about this, and my theory is Fight Island. Do you remember in COVID, one of the only sports that kept going oh, yeah. was UFC? And Yes Island and oh, Abu Dhabi. Yes Island and <laughs> Abu Dhabi. They were just like, bugger it, we're doing it all here from Fight Island. Yeah. Well, here's my, my theory, because every year we hear about the people uh, who, in Qatar, how many hundreds of people died building those things. Yep. This happens, they cleared the slums in Rio in 2016. Yep. All these people, this keeps happening. Why don't we find a spot somewhere like just south of Uluru, and we just put all of the facilities there. So all of the things you need for the Rugby World Cup, everything you need for the Soccer World Cup. And every year, it just rotates around. Right, this year it's the Rugby World Cup. This year it's the Football World Cup. But it all happens in the same spot. So Sport Island. Sport Island. Well, that's Yes Island. Let's be honest. Like, if you go over to Abu Dhabi, yeah. just Yes Island has Ferrari World. It has a Formula One track. Perfect. Uh, just, then just know, do it all there. What does it matter to any of us where it's actually held? Yeah, have a chat to Shake Mo. Um, he'd be into it. Shake, if made Mo? It, Shake Mo. I, Shake Mo at Abu Dhabi government. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, that's the kind of thing they would do, I reckon. Oh, but it, make, it makes so much sense. Instead of making all this stuff, because it, it, it all just gets bold. Or uh, Was it in Korea where they had the, the Winter Olympics? Oh, uh, yes. And, and from certain angles, so that you would, they would show like the... I oh, know, that was in China. In China, China, in yes. China. And so from certain angles, they would show the ski jump. And be like, oh, this is beautiful. And then you cut to the other side and it's just like this industrial city. It's like <laughs> outside Birmingham. But they've just put it in there like artificially. You, you can knock all that stuff on the head and just put it on Yas Island, uh, Yas Queen Island. Yas. But <laughs> I found it funny because like I was like reading <clears throat> lots of news articles about it and stuff. And it's just the usual fucking boneheads mm. going on about how much it's going to cost, blah, 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 whatever. And then people going, but if it's hosted throughout New Zealand – Who's gonna? What city's gonna have the opening and closing ceremony? Uh, and I was part of me was like, who gives a fuck nah. about the opening and closing ceremony? Basically, it's a bunch of school kids with flags running around in unison, running round and round in circles. Some artistic director saying it's a representation of the Pacific and the arrival of the indigenous. And it's like, no, it's not. It's a bunch of fucking primary school kids with different coloured flags. No one gives a shit. The, the, half the athletes don't give a shit because half of them are competing the next day, so they're wandering around going, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, closing ceremony, yes, because it's a massive root fest, yeah. and you're basically sliding into into DMs left, right, and centre, oh, yeah. and everything's over. But the opener, yeah, just start it. Start it off with a decent sport, maybe. Start it with badminton. 
I was thinking, um, yeah, you've got to go some sort of like full Nitro Circus type situation. Yeah. That's the only time I would actually watch it because you, anytime you have an opening ceremony, there's always they're getting so abstract now. They need a commentator to explain what's happening. Uh, now the purple orb represents the Industrial Revolution of 1892. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit. Remember the Gold Coast one where they brought in uh, Migaloo, the, oh big gi- the white whale, yes. the big white whale, because we commentated the opening ceremony and that we got in a lot of trouble for it. But I mean, a lot of negative feedback for TVNZ because yeah. we. There's some some guy started singing and I called for Sniper One to take the shot and um, didn't go down too well because apparently he was some young kid who'd won a competition to sing in the and I was like Sniper One take the shot Get, end the ceremony end it now but anyway what Megalo was great Megalo was was outstanding Tremendous. but what you, what should have happened is cannoning out of Megalo's blowhole should have been definitely been Fonzie. <laughs> It should have been Fonzie singing the voice. Instead, they roll out some kid who was like, "Oh yeah, fucking you know." Anyway, I'm 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 for it. I I like it. I like the fact that we can host um, cycling in Cambridge. Yeah. We can do the rowing in Kaupero. We can do we can do it all over the place. Sailing in Auckland, whatever. There's yeah. an athlete, surely there's an athletics track somewhere we can do the track and field. Yeah, well, we've um, also got a unique opportunity across the Canterbury Plains to run the first. Straight line marathon for forty two kilometers with no corners. World record attempt. Yeah, yeah. just running with, with a norwester behind you, you as well. You, oh, yeah. No, into your into, face. Oh no, no, you need we need to and we need a tailwind. So maybe they need to start way <laughs> out, yeah and then finish in uh, in Christchurch. In, in a, in, yeah, and around Ashburn. I, th- I like your idea though about the uh, the DM fest that goes on at the end. Oh. Remember, well, I can't remember. Was it Beijing where they tried to put the cardboard beds in so that people couldn't couldn't Bang do that kind of behaviour? Yeah, but what maybe we should do is instead of uh, closing ceremony we actually put cameras in all of the rooms like uh love island or one of those shows you're a sicko and we turn it into no well consensually and uh we're not just, we're not just gonna jump <laughs> oh, okay in. oh it's fine then oh, i mean as long as they're aware they're being filmed and so when they're all jumping on each other's cabooses we've got the uh love island uh, guy voiceovering the thing they do the reunion episode you know a week later <laughs> and then we, we just run full reality tv show from there well, that, that i would get them out. that's a good money spin in that one yeah but i'm i'm for it because the thing is what i what i hate it's it's sports is in a difficult position because it would bring so much joy to a lot of people if you did it here. Everyone will poo-poo it or whatever. Mm, mm-hmm. but, and a lot of people play sport, a lot of people enjoy it, but the squeakiest wheel is the people who don't like sport. Yep. It's the people who like the arts and everything like that. And like they can get funding for $300 million to do up the Auckland Art Gallery. Yeah. No one sees anything. Because nah. all the sports fans go, yeah, oh, whatever, you guys have that. No one sees anything. That passes through, it's fine. As soon as you say, hey, how about to have a sports event? It might cost $100 million. Yeah, the fucking Auntie Helen and every other motherfucker is yeah. going, let's go to something else. I've never heard the Mad Butcher pipe up at an art gallery getting oh, renovated. I know. It's stuff like that. It's kind of a sports on a hiding to nothing because but there was, we're a little bit too relaxed, too, a little bit too, oh, yeah, okay, it's going to cost a bit of money. Maybe not, yeah. But, yeah. And, but, and then the, the squeaky arts people are like, ah, it's a waste of money. We could be spending it on a hospital. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we shouldn't be spending money on, and that is fucking stupid shit like, TVNZ, Radio New Zealand, like mergers and stuff like that, which is hundreds of millions of yeah. dollars, which everyone goes, oh, yeah, it's a bit of a mistake. Sorry about that. Or maybe a underground rail system in Auckland, which only students and tourists are going to use, and that's up near some like $10 billion or something. I, I completely agree with you. Unless Radio New Zealand or TVNZ are offering any jobs at the moment, in which case I'm all for the looking? funding of that. Are you looking? I'm not looking, but... You said hundreds of millions. <laughs> yeah, well, it, does, it doesn't go to staff, oh, that's for sure. It. I think right. it goes to a few. Anyway, fuck, fuck the merger then. I'm all for it because it, it's one of these things where, you know, when it gets here and it starts, everyone will love it. But we've just got to maybe just bag and gag and bound, whatever, gag and bound Andy Helen and everyone else who complains about it. Okay. Uh, and just get on with it. Yeah. Uh, the mother. Yeah, uh, the mother. He's out of the Highlanders fixture due to illness. So Fakatava's out, and mm-hmm. obviously Aaron Smith is out. Yep. So the Highlanders are Fakatava. You reckon? A hundred percent. I mean, they're going over to Perth. That already is a scheduling loss. When you oh, look yeah. at, you know, you're going from uh, Dunedin, which is freezing cold, to Perth, which is still hot this time of year. On top of that, it's a five, might even be a six-hour time difference at the moment. My dad rang me at eleven o'clock last night. Um, yeah. to give, he lives in Perth. To give you an idea of uh, the the time difference, he thought that was okay to ring a bloke at eleven pm. <laughs> um, and, and so, like already, this is a scheduling loss. The time difference, the the weird sort of um, travel. It, it's in Australia, but it might as well not be because it's a three hour flight to get to. So if you're coming from Dunedin, you've got to go to Christchurch, then to Sydney, which is a three hour flight, then another five hour flight across mm. the Nullarbor to the opposite side. 
uh, to then play great stadium yeah. that they play in there. Um, but this was already a scheduling loss. Now they're down two halfbacks. God knows who. There was a game that the Highlanders played earlier this year where their first five, both first fives had gone down. Aaron Smith had to play first five. So they're already so like behind the eight ball in terms of staff. And now you're just going to you're gonna have, what, the, the bus driver playing halfback? Well, I, well that, is that why I've just noticed here on the TAB uh, good punt mm. that, that you've uh, got a bit of a multi going on Super Rugby oh, and yeah. you've – You've chosen missionary position for uh, most of it, with the Chiefs, yes. the Crusaders, and the Blues yep. winning. And the uh, but the but the banana skin you've thrown in there is yep. you're backing the Western weakness uh, yep. to rumble the Highlanders. Yeah, we're going to call this happiness insurance. Uh, this is uh, not a fair representation of where I think the competition's at. I just wanted to bump the value up as well because the the Western weakness are uh, uh, paying three seventy. I was going to say they're favourites, they are not. They're paying 370, so that's going to bump the whole value of the thing up. All right, so we've got a $100 bonus bet on that four-way yep. that four-way multi with the only banana that one, potentially? Yeah. Well, yeah, because the Chiefs are playing the Drua, the Crusaders are playing the Rebels, the Blues are playing the Waratahs. They're all paying $1.07, $1.10, $1.13. So. And, what's, and what's our pot up to? <coughs> what's, so what's the, what's the, uh, the ACC pot up to? ACC pot is at $761 Ow! at the moment. If this one comes in, then we hit that magic target of $1,000, and then we're going to have to figure out how we distribute that to the masses. I think if you just text uh, TAB to 3236, yeah. I think uh, you register there, and we get once it gets to 1000 every time we reach 1000 we're mm. going to divvy it up 10 ways and give everyone $100 bonus bets. The amount of bets that we've got on across the ACC suite of podcasts and commentaries <laughs> right now, we've got five pending bets, so any one of those comes off, um, we're in the money. If two, of the, if they all come off, then we're paying out twice. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I've got, um, I've got one... Tomorrow with the Chiefs game, I'm uh, paying all right, actually. The first scoring play to be a Chiefs try against the Drua yeah, in Hamilton. Uh, and it was paying, I think, like 3.30 or something. Yeah. I was like, yeah, so I climbed on that. I know you're excited about that Chiefs game. Uh, we had a point in the rundown saying, are the Chiefs going to run away with it, Chiefs money? And we talked about this earlier. I know you believe that they are. Oh, absolutely. Chiefs money! They're about, to, they're about to run into a buzzsaw next week, though. So they've got the Drua this week. The next week they're oh, playing yeah. the Satyrs. So that is a big one, isn't it? That's, yeah. They've had, they're messing around with the back line a little bit. They've got um, McKenzie has gone to fullback, and they've um, put right? Sean Stevenson on the wing, uh, on the right wing. Who's playing at first five for uh, them? Old um, son of Warren. Bryn Gatlin. Oh. Yeah, so they've had a bit of a mix-up there. They've still got um, Poi Hippie and uh, the Rona in midfields, but they're just having to play around with that. I don't know uh, if you can read too far into that against the Drua, to be fair. Yeah, but they've got Narawa. He's on the bench. So that's interesting that they've got Sean Stevenson and they've got um, Nanai Satuto on the other wing. Yeah, I think Stevenson, for me, has probably been the player of the season so far. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think Will Jordan's getting antsy about it too because you're now starting to see all these articles drip feeding out, going Will Jordan very close to return, very Wait, close to return. It's so mysterious with Will Jordan. It's like, how bad is he? What I loved last year was that they started calling it inner ear problems. You know what's inside your ear? Your brain. <laughs> and he got his brain rattled. Can <laughs> they just come out and say that? I don't it's all, understand. It's all very hush hush for some reason. And yeah. I hope he's all right, and I hope he comes back. Same here, because he's. He's golden balls. Yeah, he is. He is golden balls, and I want him back, but it's just the scenes like he's just, oh, he's not ready yet. Well, no. Like, well, I hope he's okay. Yeah. Well, because, no, sh- shout out to him. Yeah, because if he doesn't, then our World Cup chances, like, he can't play no super rugby, and then we just throw him in the All Blacks for the home series. No, no, that's the Roger Tuivasa shit. Uh, treatment oh, and yeah. as we've seen it doesn't really work that well but I think it's a good problem to have Shooter Stevenson's been absolutely out the gate yeah. this uh, year um, and we've got our ultra pre-games our export ultra pre-games Hell yeah. happening all over the country this weekend it is before the Blues Waratahs match at the Kingslander between 4 and 6 so head down there um, I'll be pouring the beers there yeah. and I'll be buying you beers so you just have to come and see me and I'll hook you up with a export ultra um, and then we've got a few Lined up after that in Christchurch. Yeah, got Robbie's in Christchurch. They're yep. going down to Needham. We're going to Lee Street Liquor. Lee Street Liquorland. That's yep. going to bring back some memories for me. I'm yep. going down there. And the, and going to the Tron Yeah, as well. So before a Chiefs game. So just look out for that. We've got these pre-games going on where we go down and we just basically buy everyone Export Ultras. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty sweet deal. It's pretty easy. <laughs> I mean, we, we, when, we, when we did it in Queenstown, people were just like shocked and surprised. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what does that say about us as a country, as Kiwis, <laughs> when someone's just trying to do you a favour and you're looking at them sideways going, what do you want from me? We don't want anything hey, from we're you. We're just buying you beer. We're just buying you beer. And if you want to win a table to, at the uh, Kingslander, we've got um, four tables of five uh, plus tickets to the game as well oh. to give away. So text ULTRA to uh, 3236 uh, and uh, register your, your interest there. So what's going on in Australia 
<laughs> they are basically using the NRL as some sort of recruitment hub. Is yeah. That what I'm, is that what I'm reading into? Yeah, so the story it came out today, or actually last night, that uh, Eddie Jones, the latest in his motivational tools, is he's brought a cattle prod to training. So um, No, he hasn't. Yeah, he has. So Siliasi Vunivalu, he watched him play for the Melbourne Storm, and he lit it up, and he's been great for the Reds as well. And for some reason, uh, Eddie Jones is quoted as saying that there's some holes in his game um, but we're here as coaches to help fill those ga- uh, those holes. And one way that we can do that is by motivating him. How do we motivate him? Well, the cattle prod. And he brought a cattle prod it to... Is... Okay, I need an explanation of a cattle prod before you carry on. Because yeah. for me, there's... Are you saying it's one of those big, long sticks that um, farmers walk around in? Or are you talking no. the electric one? Yes. The, like the taser? Not the stock stick. No. The actual... <laughs> yeah, cattle prod. And that's what he's brought to... Training. This is the latest in a long line of weird motivational tactics from Eddie Jones because famously at the 2019 World Cup when the uh, English team beat the All Blacks, yeah. as a motivational tool before that, he brought a samurai sword. He's part Japanese, Eddie Jones yeah. is, got a Japanese wife, they were in Japan, yeah. and he went and bought an actual samurai sword and cut a kiwi fruit in half in front of the team and was like, that's what we're going to do to the All Blacks. This weekend we're going to cut them in half, cut the kiwis in half. So, like, this guy's is, a nutter. Uh, so that is... Potentially the, I mean, you can cut a kiwi fruit knife, a kiwi fruit in half with a butter knife. They serve them with plastic spoons with a knife on the end of it <laughs> that you cut them open with. So it's, it's not it's really so, saying much. It's so small as well. At least you could have got like a big fake giant kiwi fruit, yeah. or put a pic, well, put it on the top a of an all black kiwi. Yeah, of head, and then did that. But that's Rich tiny, tiny little Chinese gooseberry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's just bizarre. And I also kind of think that uh, sport. We talk about this sometimes on this podcast. If you brought that into like an office environment, imagine if your boss just came in and was just like, right, third quarter, we're going to blow our competition out of the water we, and then brought in a samurai sword and cut their like merchandise <laughs> in half. Imagine the, you know, the guy in charge of Nike brings a pair of Adidas in there and he just chops them in half with a samurai sword. You're like, them. Jesus Christ. But because it's sport and you need to motivate these blokes to try and kill each other and because Eddie Jones has predominantly a winning record, we, we sort of like, oh, yeah, okay, that's yeah. pretty, that's sweet. It's a cattle prod, Siliasi Vunivalu, <laughs> on, you know, in camp. It's, it's absolutely bizarre. All right. I remember um, talking of motivational tactics, playing for the Waimati Under-18 team, and our coach at halftime uh, in the changing rooms goes, um, look, I know they've got uh, about six Samoans in their team, but, you know, we got two Maoris in ours, and I, I, I think that's just as valuable. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> me, me and <laughs> looked at each other and went, ah. Oh, I know where you're going with that one, mate, so we're just going to leave it. But uh, I just thought that was such a funny, like, motivational tactic. It's like, you're trying, God bless you. Um, something out of um, a Huddle Up, a, a kind of a sports subscription um, newsletter, mm. is quite interesting about the PGA mm. and the fact that um, there's an article written about how they believe that Live Golf has obviously helped PGA raise its profile because oh, obviously it's... everyone was just talking about – they go on about how they hate each other, but it's actually worked for the game, and PGA has never been more popular. Yeah. Um, and there's some out there's some out the gate figures. They're almost 100 years old, the PGA, but they'll hand out $550 million worth of prize money, the PGA, this year. Oh, the, yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't understand how, up until now, they've had that much money to dish out. Yeah, well, they always have. This yeah. was, this is why the Live started, because... They percentage wise are on the, what the association makes and what the players get is the lowest in the world. Yeah, because they that makes they, sense. Yeah, so that's why they the live guys were like, well, fuck this, we're not getting a, a percentage of the actual revenue. But it's such a weird sport in that like it's not a massive viewership sport like you're just saying. Oh, it hasn't been up until now. Yeah, but yet these guys are, had still been making a lot of money, and you know the competition makes a lot of money. Rich well, guy sport. Well, you're saying that the Masters tournament they averaged 12 million viewers for the Masters. Oh, okay. Uh, it was the most watched golf tournament uh, in, the, in the past five years. But so far this year, like, John Ram has made 13.5 million US already this year. Just off tournaments? Yeah. A fair swagger that would have been at the Masters, though, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's true, actually. But there's like loads of people in the top 10 I've never heard of. I've never heard of um, Tyrell Hatton. No. He's made 5 million. Could walk in Sa- there right now. <laughs> Sam Burns, have you heard of him? Sure haven't. Mm-hmm. He's made um, 5.7 million. Uh and uh, Patrick Cat- Cantley. Yeah, I know Patrick yeah. Cantley. Yeah, what about Max Homer? Yeah, Max Homer, the yeah, homie. Yeah. He's the great. homie. He's got 7.7. Scotty Scheffler, he's on 12.5 million. Yeah. Um, but So there's some pretty unknown names in there that are making some from pretty sweet Serious coin. coin. Yeah, yeah, you could just be a journeyman golfer, can't you, and, and make pretty serious cash. 
Yeah. So, um, but then you can look at the highest paid uh, golfers ever, and it's Phil Mickelson at 138 million. Oh my god, uh, he played so well at the. Uh, and Dustin Masters Johnson at 97 million. So it's all the live players. DeChambeau, 86 million. Kepka at 69 million. Nice. 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 And Tiger Woods still hanging in there. Oh, brilliant. 68 million. Just quickly on the golf as well. Um, Lydia Coe's playing the, is it the Chevrolet tournament that they do? This is the one where... Uh, oh, they, they biff them in the, in the lake when they, they win. They biff them in the lake. Well, they've moved because Chevrolet have moved the um, tournament to a different place. And they've got a, a pond there and they've built a little bridge so that whoever the winner is, if they choose, can run down there and jump in. Yeah. They've had to install a net about 40 feet away from that pontoon um, to stop gators from swimming up into the thing. <laughs> are, you, are you backing that net? Like if you're, if you're Lydia Ko and you win that tournament, which she's the favourite too. I think they should go back to just spraying the water bottles on each other because I'm not getting in a pond. And that's always so murky as well. Yeah, it's disgusting. And there's some great footage of a recent PGA tournament of gators just all over the course, <laughs> like just wandering around. One of them, one of them had one leg. It was like um, <laughs> shuck off uh, how Happy Gilmore got his revenge because <laughs> yeah, yeah. one, one of them was just limping across the, um, the fairway. It I'm was, not playing on a golf course where they got dinosaurs. Yeah. I'm just, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, nah, same. Speaking of dinosaurs. Yeah. What's with the bloke doing backstroke through oh. the rhino enclosure at Auckland Zoo? Yeah. I mean, uh, got the inside word on that? Now look, <laughs> to pull you behind the curtain, uh, my partner works in that very enclosure. Uh, she was in charge of the, the, that area. Oh shit, that would have been quite stressful. Well, spirit thought for me, who, you know, it's fair thought for me. Let's just concentrate on me for a sec, all right? I'm out on the golf course yesterday afternoon. <laughs> I'm trying to enjoy myself. My phone starts blowing up, and it's my missus. Oh, heaven of bloody, have you seen the news? God, what a full-on day. And I'm like, oh, God, what's this going to be about? And uh, next minute, we've got some absolute nut job who's jumped the fence into the rhino enclosure. Um, and he, there's videos on the news last night. You would have seen the videos yeah. by now. He's like swimming around in yeah, there. Yeah, it's so gross in there. It's, it's just so full disgusting. Of rhino shit. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. All of the comments were saying that they were saying, "Oh, rhinos always do their business in the um, in, in the, the water. water. They don't oh. um, take it from a man whose partner shovels that shit oh, every yeah. single day. For the garden, <laughs> let's be not oh, terrific uh, for the garden. <laughs> well, that was one of the funnier things that I liked about um, the the social media because everybody becomes an expert on these things. Yeah. People were saying that thing. Oh, they only um, do their business in the water, so that's full of rhino shit. That's not true. Um, not saying that it's clean water in there because it certainly isn't. No. And the other thing was like, oh my God, the hippos are in there. They haven't had hippos there for seven years. Nah. Now, my favourite thing, because I go to the zoo all the time, as you'd imagine, my favourite thing is to stand at that enclosure and just talk to whoever I'm with so that everyone else can hear me and say, no, no, they've still got the hippos. They can just hold their breath for a long time, so we just need to wait and then just see what idiots around me will pick up on that <laughs> and see how long yeah, uh, an they will wait there. My, my main concern yesterday when this dude jumped in there was not that his wallet fell out of his pocket and his shoes came off and the fact that he was in there with the that he might have got trampled or whatever. It was what if they had a Harambee situation where, oh, yeah. remember that kid fell yes. into the Cincinnati Zoo in 2016 and Harambee yeah, was R. playing R. with him. R.I.P. Rest in power. Um, and, and, you know, was looking after this kid. But it was misconstrued. Yeah, and they put it. They put Harambe down, didn't they? They put Harambe down. I just don't know if you could put a rhino down, if I'm honest. Those things are just about invincible. Well, do you think that Harambe got put down because he's almost human-like? You know, he had he was playing like yeah. a rhino would just trample that guy. It'll be over real, real quick, real quick. <laughs> and then they're seen as like wildebeest as opposed to primates. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And then they would have thought, oh, and then once. Once a primate plays with a human, they want to play with half thousands of them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, don't know. I definitely don't try. Of all the zoo animals, the primates are the ones that terrify me. Oh the most. yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're massive sex pests as well. Oh yeah, if you've seen time. that one whacking off in front of the window, <laughs> that, that's for me. It's it's disturbing stuff. Well, it's it, like every time you go to any zoo that has monkeys, they're doing something. They're terrible. doing something awful, and a parent always has to explain, <laughs> "Mummy, why is that one doing that to the other one?" Like, oh, oh the, Jesus the Christ! Baboons, man, they are massive pounders. Like <laughs> at Auckland Zoo, I have seen baboon sex so many times, and I've had to just start, tell my kids they're just having a wrestle. But it's like that's a pretty funny wrestle because yeah. like, ah, oh, while well, yeah. they're jumping on each other's yeah. caboose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. 
Righto, so time to get on uh, wide on of the week. What gave you a wide on in the sporting week this week, uh, Manoia? Look, I'm getting a bit repetitive and it's a good problem to have because the wire's getting up yet again. Yep. They arrested the slider. They lost two in a row. I think people would have been you know, hitting the panic button. Yep. And I'm still not getting too hyped up. Um, but any time the Warriors win a gritty, gutsy performance like that, it was a real like my palms are sweating thinking about it now. <laughs> it was such a it was such an ugly win. Oh my god! Um, the last but, twenty minutes, Jesus. Oh, well, it's to the point where my father, who I mentioned before, rung me at eleven o'clock at night um, from Western Australia. He reckons that we're going to get them. We're going to get the uh, the storm on really? Tuesday. Really? So, Jeez. people are starting. To, people are starting to really believe. Now he's a day one uh, Warriors fan, but people are starting to genuinely believe that this could be a a, a good run. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say I have to go the Chiefs Manor. Chiefs Manor! Oh, yeah. Great. And particularly the try by the Rona. I, I'm, I know I'm massively biased yeah. on Chiefs Manor. Sure. But one of the tries of the season so far. Yeah, and, and, a, and a great highlight. That's up now on the ACC's Instagram Facebook page. Go and have a look at that. Yeah, because we're not, we do a halftime show uh, during the, in the commentary, and we don't have access to replays. <laughs> so James McConey and myself had to reenact what yes. we thought was the greatest try of all time. Uh, <laughs> Not a, but we didn't even have a rugby ball. We had an American football. Yeah. And I think we did a pretty bang up job on, uh, on describing what happened there. We may have missed out a couple of players, uh, Narawa in particular, yeah. who um, was key in instrumental. And, and the instrumental <laughs> in scoring that. So we missed out a couple of key details, but uh, they, they did it for me. And they're back again tomorrow night, uh, Friday mm-hmm. night, if you're listening, uh, later than Thursday against the Drua. Um, but like you said, Manai, they're up against it after that because they've got the Satyrs after that. Yeah. And, uh, trying to protect their unbeaten. Record, but they've got the Crusaders at home. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's at least that's an advantage. Uh, and then you got the Blues versus the Waratahs. Obviously, we've got the ultra pregame before that one on Saturday night. Um, uh, my six-year-old son uh, Frank is playing the curtain raiser. Oh yes. Yeah. He just if you go along to that game and you see a, a blonde-headed kid, massive ball hog who thinks he's a hot stepper, <laughs> it's him. It's him. And he just does not pass, and he's been practicing his step on me. And I can't stop laughing because he jumps in the air and doesn't actually move. He just, like, lots of legs go everywhere like uh, a jellyfish. Yeah, it's the misdirection uh, yeah, yeah, with the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just goes, like this. And I was like, yeah, it's good. You're getting there. You're you getting you there. actually got to change yeah, direction, you gotta, though. You're actually, yeah, you've got to go around. So look out, uh, look out for him. Uh, but it's now it's time for... Topper Plays of the Week. Of the week. Brought to you by Lita NZ's Lasagna Topper. Now, I'm a nice Stuart, an, an mm-hmm. archive video has come out oh. of Diego Maradona, like back in, looks like obviously playing an Argentinian club yep. football. Yep. And a fight breaks out on the field and he knocks the fuck out of some guy with a knee to the head. Like it is so brutal. Oh, mate, this was great. I, I was there when Joe Jury fished this one out of the annals of uh, internet <laughs> archives and and just it's the knee to the chin, the, the entire scrap is very league focused. Yeah. No one's throwing a punch. <laughs> well, they're football players. I know, I know. But they're, they're, still, used, they're like, playing to their strengths. I know, but they're like squaring up with each other with their hands by their sides and then just throwing all, <laughs> all, all manner of kicks and roundhouses. And It must be from the early 80s or something, but it's brutal, It's one man. of the weirdest fights. Well, yeah, but it's one of those knockouts where you see these in the USC every now and then. They call it reaching for God when they just go out and they're just giving it the fucking... Yeah. <laughs> Because he also, the guy knocks out, looks like a support staff as well. He doesn't look like was, a player. No, he was like the equipment manager or something. He, just, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think he was bending down. Yeah. And the greatest football player of all time comes past and just knees him in the temple. Yeah. It is, it's, it's brutal. It's it absolutely is. terrifying. It reminds me of um, Kermit Washington. If you want to go and look that one up from the NBA, that was a, a massive king hit, a punch. And the guy got knocked out. He was just on the ground. And then in the grainy 80s footage, you can just see a pool of blood starting to oh. <laughs> trickle out. And then they're like, we're going to go to an advertisement here by <laughs> Pepsi Cola. You check it out on the uh, ACC NZ Instagram and Facebook. Um, number two, uh, Morgan Barron of Winnipeg Jets takes a uh, skate to the face oh my God. in the NHL playoffs. And he gets 75 stitches. 75. That's sickening. And, and <laughs> returns to the game because he's a goddamn hockey player. Some of the injuries that they have in hockey are just, like, it's one of the most gruesome uh, sports, and they and they love it. I don't understand why ice hockey is not more popular here in New Zealand, because all of the things that we love about rugby yes. are all of the great things about yeah. uh, ice hockey. The violence, the speed of the game. Yeah. It's a tough man's big hit, game. Big hits. Big hits, um, big goals. The problem is you can't see the puck, but, you know, half of the South Island is cold enough that you can play ice hockey yeah. outside in winter. 
So I don't understand why we're not more on it. Yeah, that's true. I didn't. I only learned from Joe Jury. He's obviously a massive ice hockey tragic. Mm, he should be yeah. living in Canada. He's got this big ginger beard. He looks yep. Canadian. Yep. He, he skates. But he was telling me, I mean, it was both of us actually, we were talking about um, how long, you know, the rotation of, of subs. Yes. And they only on the court, they're only on the, the rink for like maximum two minutes. Two, yeah. Two and a half minutes. Because it's, it. it's just like basically sprint, 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 off, sprint, 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 and it's endless subs. That's madness. I didn't know that. I thought your best player had stayed out there most of the game, but he only plays about, your best player would only play about 30, 40% of a game. Yeah, it's out of control. I've talked to multiple people who've been to the States and watched the big three, you know, watched a football game, a basketball game, an ice hockey game, and I've all said that um, the ice hockey game is the most fun to watch in person. It's just intense. Like, I didn't realise it was so explosive, and yeah. you know, you've just got a minute and a half to go crazy, and yep. you're off resting, yep. electrolytes. Have a scrap whatever. if you want. Have a punch up. Have a dust up, <laughs> have a bit of buff. <laughs> yeah, it's totally. all kosher. Totally. Um, and the number one topper player of the week, I still haven't been able to watch the entire thing. Mm -mm. I can't do it. Mm -mm. There's a couple of things, yeah, I, there's so many things wrong with it, yet I do like how he's owned it. <laughs> and <laughs> that is the Colm Wills Hucker. Uh, I was hoping we wouldn't have this audio. <laughs> Responding to himself. Okay, okay. I, can't, I, still can't, I still can't do it. I still can't do it. But uh, I mean, full credit. In the third, what the third T uh, twenty, he didn't do it. Um, so the curse was lifted, and we won. Great. Um, and also, it was recognised on social media with Grant Elliott um, saying, "What a formidable front row! No hacker today." And uh, Kyle Mills also commenting, "Hackers bring in the crowds." <laughs> And so, look, I don't think he's ever going to do that again. I think it's up there on the podium with the Martin Crow hucker. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <coughs> there's a Sean Fitzpatrick shocker that I've seen as well recently. He was on a tour over in, in Europe. And this is no disrespect to any of these people doing it, but good God, it's it's a tough watch. Yeah, it's, it's manaless. Yeah. That's what you described <laughs> it as. It's a low mana move. Yeah, yeah. it's the low mana move that you described me. <laughs> we will mean there. Like, we will, I'm, not, I'm not judging, man. I did, I did my time. I did five years in London. <laughs> And untold amounts of impromptu white man hackers. <laughs> low mana so, hackers. Lo, low mana hackers, particularly at things like beer fests. And, you know, I remember at beer fest once, it was uh, when the new hacker had just come out. Kapo Pongo? Yes. And it had only, it only been done once. Right. And some real propeller head, white dude, had managed to, like, I don't know how many times he was watched it or any. Yeah. And he got up at beer fest oh, no. and like basically shh, 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 oh, no. and quietly everyone and did the new and everyone was like oh. and you know how there's quite a lot of quite a lot of silence in it and there's quite yeah. a lot of built and like people and by halfway through the most Germans and Italians had turned around we carry on smashing stones and this poor guy was still going up on this table. What's what's weird about it, the Kyle Mills run as well, is because part of a hucker is there's a leader, then there's people uh, following along. So it's like this call and response thing. It's kind of like singing Islands in the Stream by yourself, <laughs> but then having to do both parts. It's what makes it sound so weird when one person does a solo hucker. It's, uh, it's yep. bizarre. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. Well done. Uh, congratulations to... Uh, Kyle Mills. And don't forget, um, commentary of Super Rugby this weekend, Chiefs Drua Friday Night Blues, Waratahs, Sky Sport 9 and iHeart Radio. And, of course, Anzac Day uh, is going to be the Wawas v. The Storm with Manaya. Yep, and Ben the, Hurley. On the call on Sky Sport 9. So uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. Woo! You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. <laughs> For more episodes, subscribe on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.